wouldn't have scrap club because they'd, they'd probably use everything that's being thrown away in some and way. Are you making money out of this? We're, we're not actually making money. Not, we're just covering expenses. People do pay tickets to, go, to come to scrap club, which is actually on the 20th of February. Do, do I bring my own hammer or do I get no, we, one? No, we provide everything. Provide yeah, one. yeah, yeah. You, you're welcome to bring your own TV set or something. Near a, near a 15 or, or a yeah. computer. But it is, it is a there is a serious aspect to this, which is, of course, that in the developing world they do recycle. Do you think there are any signs in the uh, developed capitalist world of uh, people thinking about recycling more? Not the recycling of putting it in dumps, but actually making... I think you could probably make something out I of that. I think they should. Um, I think they should. I, it, our, our angle towards it is more the destructive side. There are people who make stuff from junk, like uh, plenty of people who make art from junk or various useful objects. But um, the way we do it, we just focus on the actual stress relief and the, and the, the if you like, the choreography of just swinging. Uh, okay, Joel, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, leading a double life can be stressful, but not for our next guest, who finds peace in jazz and uh, Islam. Yes, well, when I first met Abdul Qadir, he was with a group of Muslim peace activists in Brooklyn, New York. But he swung by London recently with a group of musicians. It turns out our brother Qadir is none other than the world-class soul jazz drummer Ben Dixon. Take it away. I was born Ben Dixon, and uh, I made my name professionally as Ben Dixon. And Ben Dixon is a world-class drummer, and Abdul Qadir is a Muslim. And uh, so when you met me, you met me in uh, an Islamic setting. I was Abdul Qadir, and now when you see me today, I'm in a jazz setting, and I'm performing as Ben Dixon. How come you got into jazz? Did that happen before Islam or after? No, it happened before Islam. Uh, I loved the music. I came up in the era of swing and bebop music, and I loved the music very, very much. And in fact, I was first inspired by my father. He used to shine his shoes, and he'd pop out a rhythm with the shoe shine rag. And that fascinated me, and I tried to emulate it. So that started me on my career towards becoming a drummer. And uh, when I was in the fourth grade, he bought me my first set of drums, a paper set. I beat holes in them. <laughs> And so from that point on, I started beating on pots and pans. And my grandmother <laughs> would get after me and say, boy, stop beating on those pots and pans. But that's the way it went. So uh, I, I wound up being a, a successful jazz musician. Since I'm known all over the world, that wherever I go, I mean, people come out to see me. And so that's uh, one of the, you know, uh, things that happen after you make a name in jazz. I started recording uh, in 1957, and I recorded extensively in, for Blue Note Records and also May Gold Records, ABC Paramount with the Lord Price Orchestra, and I've recorded with many big name stars on Blue Note. So everybody knows me like tonight. I mean, there'll be a bunch of drummers in here, you know, coming to see me. <laughs> and critique me and tell me what I'm not doing. <laughs> how, uh, how tight is the drumming world? It's a very small world, isn't it? Well, no, it's not, not a small world. Uh, the music world is a very big world. Musicians know each other and musicians have an affinity, you know, to each other because of the, uh, you know, the field itself. It doesn't matter whether you're a jazz musician, a rock musician, a classical musician. I have people who come, to, come out to our concerts with classical musicians and they have jazz, uh, jazz CDs that I recorded on for me to sign, you know. And so uh, it's, it's the, the music world is a world, it's, it's one big family, let's put it like that. But music is a very, very hot topic in the Islamic world as well. There are those who um, will enjoy all sorts of music, mm -hmm. and there are those that say it's absolutely forbidden and haram. How do you square that? I don't have anything to do with the fatwas that are, you know, given concerning music. What I do is I perform the music, you know, and it's, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know I was going to be a jazz drummer, you know. I had no idea when I was born that I would be a musician, you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that urge in me. In fact, I'll tell you what happened. 
I went to college on a basketball scholarship. You know, I was a very, I was an excellent basketball player. I led my uh, high school team to the city championship, etc. You know, and I got a scholarship. Now, in my second year, my urge was so strong to go into music that I had to leave because if something was pressing me in my chest, trying to kill me. So I had to go, and I left, and uh, I went into the field of music, and uh, you know, the rest of it is history. It's written. Well, uh, that certainly rocked the boat. Uh. Yeah, so I'll be prepared to be rocked again, but not by music, but by the plight of the last British resident in Guantanamo. Campaigners are trying to keep the name of Saudi-born Shaka Amr in the public eye, and so... Uh, Cameras headed for Downing Street, home of the British Prime Minister, to remind him of the man who seems to have been left behind. The father of four British-born children will have been incarcerated for more than eight years by now, and British Labour MP Martin Linton intends to take his case to Washington. Here's what happened at the weekend. <laughs> 